What a cutie. Okay, let me help you. Hey, don't, they're in the stall. Don't let all the other babies out. I still have to milk the mamas. Good morning, ladies. It's a bunch of baby goats. He likes hugging me. Honey, I don't think she's, I don't think she really uh, understands fully. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is extremely cute, isn't it? So we have begun rehoming some of the baby goats and we are keeping Mac and Mercy. We are keeping Pearl, which is the new little girl that was born the other day. And I'm gonna keep an eye on her. May, she may be too little to be out here. But the two boys, M Miriam's two boys are actually going to a new home this morning which will alleviate some of the strain of what we're dealing with with this many bottle babies. And it's about time for, for we, the kids call him Coco, but Clover's little boy to not be in here anymore because I don't want him to get anybody pregnant. I don't remember ever having such a trying kidding year. Uh, this one's just been a lot. And I mean, partially it was just we had a lot of unknowns. We had new goats that I didn't know but I needed to cut down my goat herd because um, we know that we have a move coming up and we know that our plan is to move onto raw land and build a farm from scratch. That's just something that is just like deeply rooted in our heart that we wanna do. And obviously moving less animals is easier. I know that I'm wanting to be in a place that we will be able to get a cow, not immediately. We need to like have a house and stuff like that first, or at least a barn. Um, but, and so I've always known that I needed to cut my goat herd down and really just cut it back to what I really wanted to keep and the ones that I was really, really attached to and, and that had the traits that I wanted to keep in my herd. And being the eternal optimist that I am, I'm looking at the bright side of this kidding season and how hard it's been and it is helping me make the hard decisions that I needed to make. So if I had to find some gratitude in it, that would be it. You can come out, you're okay. You're looking for your little airplane? Yeah, I don't know where it is either. My little son got all topsy-turvy. That's better. Oh, look at that golden hour light. It sounds like the turkeys are conversating with the wild geese. If you've been here for very long, you've heard me talk about the wild geese because the first morning that I spent the night at our house, we, we bought it and it needed a lot of repairs and we were having to do a lot of stuff before we could move in. And Maya had been out here a lot, but I stayed out here like painting and I slept on the couch. It was the only furniture we had. And I woke up early in the morning, and this was in April uh, of 2014. And I sat on the front steps and listened to the wild geese sing on the pond across the street. And it so moved my heart because I grew up in town. Like I always lived in a neighborhood. And so I just never heard anything like that really. It was not, it wasn't normal to be surrounded by nature sounds. I lived you know, like a mile from the freeway. So it was always kind of loud with man-made sounds and it wooed me tremendously. And of course now it always woos me to hear them. So I've got a lot of plants on the front porch, many of which I've picked up at nurseries the last few days. And some of them, like this alyssum, um, I bought several different things of alyssum. It's just so cheap. And when you buy it in these little starts, it ends up spreading like crazy and making kind of like a really great uh, living mulch. This is like a fuchsia alyssum, which is really pretty. The most popular one is the white, as you can see here. I also got a dark purple. And I like to plant alyssum in a lot of places. Now it does really well from seed. So I a lot of times will sprinkle seed packets, but the reason why I went ahead and bought this as starts was because I didn't start any and I'd like to give it 
as early a chance as possible to really take over because I'm hoping that having it as a living mulch will keep the weeds down. And so I'm putting it in a lot of places in the perennial garden. Now, a lot of times I will also plant or list some around like the base of cucumber plants and like any ground level. If I ever use any TP trellises in the garden, I'll do it underneath those. Just like anywhere that I want there to be ground cover to keep weeds down. Alyssum is actually a part of the brassica family, like cabbage and kale and broccoli and cauliflower. And it is fully edible. I'm actually not gonna eat this because this came from a nursery and this is an ornamental, not a food plant, obviously not organic, and I have no idea what's on it. <laughs> but you can, it's kind of pungent, peppery, and it works great as a living mulch because it has and I cannot think of the name for it. Somebody might be able to help me with this. It's, um, there's a word for it, but its roots will actually separate and go around the roots of other plants. So it's a good living mulch because it's not going to combat the other plants you have it around. It doesn't flower a ton in like the heat of summer, but it still lives. And then it picks back up and falls. So a lot of times when I'm tearing the other stuff that's died back out of the garden, the alyssum is getting like really showy again as the weather cools off, which is really cool. And then it continues to live even past the frost. I think it's a super underrated garden plant and you can buy uh, six packs because it's sold as annuals a lot of times for just like a couple of bucks. And so I did, because I saw them and I was like, I wanna buy some plants and these will do just fine. I have some other things on the front porch that I picked up from a nursery, uh, like some tomato and pepper plants. Here's a couple of dahlias, some marigolds, some coleus over here, some basils and tomatoes. And I'm actually about to move those all in the greenhouse because the greenhouse is getting shut up tonight because we are going to be flirting with freezing. It's not supposed to like, it doesn't say that it's actually gonna freeze, but I'm just not gonna take any chances. I did just buy all these plants and I would actually like to be able to plant them. <laughs> So the rest of this stuff, the alyssum, the lettuce, the spinach, there's a little chard. All of those things are frost hardy because so they can stay on the front porch. And I'm just gonna grab these things. I'll take them in the greenhouse. Turn my fan off so you guys can hear me. If you've missed it in the past, I always keep the fan going because moving air is good for seedlings so they don't get puny. And these are definitely not puny. I feel really good about the way my tomatoes look. I also come in and run my hands over them a lot to give them also kind of the same idea as the fan. Give them a little resistance to strengthen their stems upon. Look at all the seedlings. This is very exciting. So I'll have lots of cosmos coming up. Lettuce leaf basils. I'm wondering if I didn't mark these or if I just didn't put anything in them. I don't think I put anything in them. Here I have marigolds that have come up, celosia that's come up, and some eggplants, which are gonna be kinda late, but that's okay. So I just noticed this and thought I would point it out to you guys. See this leaf right here? That is actually sun scald from this uh, tray on the top shelf getting too much sun. This is just too much for these tomatoes. So I need to move it down to a place it's not quite so bright. Anytime you're growing anywhere, you just gotta pay attention to your plants. Like, noticing that that tomato plant has a little sun scald from being up on this top shelf. It's this side, it probably gets more sun even than the back here. It's not a big deal. Like, that tomato plant can fully recover from that. However, if I left it up there, it, it could potentially get stunted and not do as great. And anytime you're growing anything, it's just important to pay attention to your plants. They will 100% let you know if something is not going right. And if you are very attentive and you're just laying eyes on them every day, sometimes twice a day, you'll notice it and you'll catch it on the early signs. Like I put a little bit of fertilizer in the water of these plants. And um, I followed the instructions, but I didn't measure it super exactly. I used the lid. And in retrospect, I think I was probably too concentrated. And 
Um, I'm noticing just a little stress on the leaves of my plants, like some little thin spots and different things like that, where they obviously were just, it just, they were having a negative reaction to that. It's not a big negative reaction. You can definitely really stunt them if you put a whole lot in at once and it wasn't enough to make that big of a difference. But I noticed and was like, okay, note to self, be more careful with that. I just feel like if you're trying to do your best, if you're trying to be attentive, if you're reading instructions and you're being present, like there's only so much that you can screw up. And if you really screw it up, like just again, harvest the lesson and change what you're doing. <laughs> That whole mentality of like, oh, I made a mistake. I'm so bad at this. I should quit entirely. I do not understand. What if we were like that in everything in life? Like, I, some people are. Like, I hear some people, they're like, I'm a terrible cook. I'm like, no, you've just never learned to cook. <laughs> like, there's a difference. And people are like, I'm a terrible gardener. And be like, no, you just have never learned to do it. <laughs> Even me, I always say I'm really bad at giving haircuts. <laughs> and I really am but it's because I've never learned to do it. All right, so I bought these trays the other day. I saw them at Tractor Supply, and I primarily use Bootstrap Farmer trays. I really like them, and they last a long time. However, I get a lot of messages from people. One of the things I've heard a lot of is I don't really have the money to invest very much in this right now, What's something I can do cheap that's gonna work well? Um, or people being like, I just don't need to start that much. I don't need, you know, to order several packs of trays when I'm only trying to start plants for two four by four foot beds, which is a, you know, valid point. So I saw these and they kind of piqued my interest. They're Burpee brand. Um, and I don't know where else they're sold, but I saw them at Tractor Supply. And I just grabbed a couple of them. They were relatively affordable. Uh, the problem that I found is that a lot of the really, really cheap options, especially when you like just go to a big box store, uh, they stink. <laughs> like, they're just cruddy and they're not a good, they're not a good option. Like for somebody to just be like, I'm trying to start seeds for the first time. I'm gonna go buy peat pots or something that's just extremely hard to maintain the moisture in. And th those are the people that end up being like, I'm a bad gardener because their one and only experience was negative. So when I saw these, I was like, hmm, okay. So I bought some, um, obviously, I, I mean, I paid for them. There's no endorsement happening here at all. I don't take my word for it because I haven't grown in them yet. So this is an experiment that we're doing together. What I liked about these is that they were a heavier duty plastic. They're not that super flimsy plastic. I think that these will actually last more than a season, more than even a couple of seasons, potentially, depending on how the silicone bottom uh, holds up. The bottom of these cells, like this bendy silicone. Whenever your plants are done, you can press it in to pop the thing out. Thought that was pretty innovative. And this is the big thing that caught my eye. They come with bottom water trays. And I think this is a huge uh, thing as far as being successful in seed starting. So it definitely got my attention. I just grabbed these two, figured we'd try them. They came in different sizes. They had one that was like six real big cells, but they were still kind of shallow. And I didn't know what that would be super useful for. I didn't, I didn't feel like that would be that big of a benefit because it's like, okay, if you were planting something in those that needed more root system, that'd be great. But if they're still this shallow, that's not really kind of defeating the purpose. So I got these. I was very optimistic when I came out here. I have chili simmering on the stove. And I brought these out and I brought rhubarb as if I was gonna do both. The sun is going down so fast. I am quickly coming to terms with reality <laughs> on my time constraints. Oh well. So what I wanna start right now are some cucumber plants and some personal melons, like the Kajari melon, uh, which is one of my favorites. I actually was looking, I think these are the only seeds I have left for the Kajari melon. So I'm gonna have to be intentional and save some seeds this year. So I also have this Charlin cantaloupe. It said honey ambrosia on it, and I guess that that just wooed my little poetic heart. So I'm gonna try that one. I like to grow smaller melons because I have so many arch trellises, and they, in my opinion, are just the shining star of the garden on an arch trellis. I think 
it's so neat. They do really well. Uh, you do have to give them support. I usually use like either pantyhose or like mesh produce bag. Someone suggested once cutting up a loofah, like if you unwind one of those like shower poof things and use strips of that, which I thought was a really fascinating idea. Oh, I was gonna start some okra too. That would actually be a really good thing in this is to start okra. Okra doesn't mind being started and it doesn't really mind being transplanted. It, but it also does really well with direct sowing. The thing with okra is, is it gets a really slow start if it's not hot. And so this year, every year I end up direct sowing it. That was what I was thinking I was gonna use this for is to start my okra. So I've got like some Hill Country Heirloom Red and I got uh, Baker Creek's new pink okra. Here it is, the Okinawa Pink. Y'all check this out. It may be sold out now. I had to watch the site for a while for that one to come back in stock. Y'all know I love me some okra, so I also love, well, I love anything that's colorful, but I also really like pink. I have a lot of very cool squashes that I'm gonna try to grow this year. I think I'm gonna try some of them in the high tunnel and do some hand pollinating and see if that helps with my a squash bug issue, my little problem. All right, this is enough to get started with because it's about to get dark. <laughs> Upon looking at my cucumber selections, I think I'm just gonna use this little tray to start them. Uh, just the right number that I need to start. I'm starting four different kinds of cucumbers. So my all-time favorite cucumber in the history of ever is the Silver Slicer. Um, I get these seeds from Hudson Valley and I've got to find it. I, it's not in this because I ordered it later, uh, but I also ordered the salt and pepper, which is one that many of you suggested, which I think is derived from the silver slicer, but it is supposed to be smaller like a pickler. Bonus. There's two in here. Did I do that? Did I order two of these and put them together? Or did I just get a little bonus? Oh, that's so nice. Somebody bought my coffee in front of me in a drive-thru the other day, and I was like, oh, little bonuses just bless my heart. <laughs> little blessings. All right, so um, last year I grew four of these plants. Four only. And I kid you not, I would come out here and harvest an entire basket of these at a time repeatedly for over a month. They did so stinking well. I was quite literally stunned. I just couldn't even believe it. And right now, like, this is so hard because I'm like, okay, four plants is sufficient. I should stop there so I can try these others, but then I'm like, but they do so well, so it makes me want to plant more. But how many cucumbers does one human need? I'm gonna stop, four plants is enough. I'll direct so stuff if I want more. <laughs> Does anyone else have such a hard time with moderation when it comes to realistic expectations of what I actually need in the garden? This is like the hardest thing for me. All right, so I'm doing the silver slicer. See, I don't need more silver slicers because I'm gonna do the, the salt and pepper. That's why. The Parisian pickling cucumber. This one is a neat cucumber. Uh, it doesn't get very tall. I'm putting two seeds in each one of these cells. And I just put the soil in here, pressing a little divot in, uh, dropping the seeds and then covering back up. The soil's already pretty damp, so I don't have to water it. And I'm doing two because I can thin them if I need to. Probably won't separate them because cucumbers don't love people messing with their roots. The Parisian pickling cucumber though is really neat because it's like a kind of dwarf. It doesn't climb as tall, so you can do it on a shorter trellis and it's little uh, gherkins size. This one is actually an F1 hybrid that I'm trying and it's supposed to do well in heat. It's called Tasty Jade. This was one that I think I read was good for greenhouse growing and I'm planning on trying some in my high tunnel this year and so that's why. I've grown so many different kinds of cucumbers over the years um, and you know a lot of them are very the same to me. Like I I could just take them all or leave them. I, I've, I haven't grown very many that I was like, ugh, I hated that cucumber. For the most part, I really like most all of them. Uh, some have definitely performed better for me, but many of them are about the same. Okay, the last one I'm doing is Monica. This is also a great greenhouse type because it doesn't require pollination. And so that is what I'm starting for the purpose of putting in my greenhouse 
on a little arch. I'm gonna label these. I'm not starting a ton of these though, and I'm not selling plants, so I'm really just starting for myself. All right, those are labeled. So I'll, I think I might put some Kajari melons in these little guys um, and see how they do. So I got some feedback. I think I've already shared this, but I'll share it again in case you are using these little expandable peat pots. Everybody said if you're gonna use these, make sure you cut this netting off. A lot of people do have success with them. Um, I got these from Grower Solutions. But they they all said cut that netting off, which makes sense. A lot of times the things that say they're biodegradable are not that biodegradable. So I'm going to set this back here. I'm actually going to put the heater on in here. I don't think it's going to be that necessary, but it's our... Oh, never mind. It's 60 degrees. <laughs> it's 60 degrees in the greenhouse. <laughs> I was about to be like, it's a little too... It is a little chilly to me. All of you guys <laughs> that are like have two feet of snow outside, you're like, shut up right now. <laughs> so I'm going to do some of the Kajaris in here and then I will also do some in some other containers. Things like melons and cucumbers, they really don't love their, their roots to be disturbed. So it's pretty important if you're going to sow these to sow them in such a way that you're not going to, to tear the roots up a bunch whenever you go to plant them. And I'm just tucking these seeds down in here. You can see here, I'm putting two in each one. These seeds are a little older, so I definitely want them to have a better chance of germination and I can thin them if needed by, by uh, you know, cutting down the extras. Now you've seen me like separate the roots of some things like tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that, but I don't do that with melons and cucumbers. You could definitely try. I just don't because in my experience, they get a little fussy whenever you start pulling their roots apart. I guess I'll have a date with okra tomorrow. Maybe completely unnecessary, but I do have some tender little babies in here. I wanna take care of them. This time of year, if it's not getting below like 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius, I just leave the door open because these guys are all about to start hardening off anyway, so might as well get them used to temperature fluctuations now. But if there's a risk of frost, I do wanna go ahead and protect my stuff because all of that in there represents a lot of work. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me a little while tonight in my greenhouse. I've got bottle baby goats to feed bottles and human kids to feed dinner. So I will talk to you guys on the next video. Bless you, until next time.